Thanks, everyone. It's great to see such a good mix of people. Certainly, um, we're quite encouraged by the mixture of landscape architects, engineers, planners, and that's the kind of discussion that we need to move forward to make sure that water sense of urban design becomes a mainstream element of our urban landscape. Uh, um, just wanted to really make sure that as we focus on today, we're thinking about water sensitive urban design and making it the, in the planning context. So turning, how are we integrating it into the planning context? So really what, what I'm hoping to see out of today is that we really harness how we can um, work with planners, engineers and landscape architects together to use water sensitive urban design to work on our public realm. Well, obviously the, the new bill, and Andrew will follow me shortly to talk about the new bill, what the opportunities are for the public realm, um, and by that they mean the parks and the streetscapes, and obviously um, as we go throughout today we'll, we'll have a lot of discussion about water sensitive urban design on site, off site, offsets, and that's going to be a really um, challenge, a big challenge for us to work through how, how we're going to roll water sensitive urban design out. But certainly at the heart of it, it's livability and it's, it's place making for the community. So um, thinking about the livability side of it, certainly um, it's, it's combining that green and the blue, the landscapes, but we also need to be mindful of some of those, those benefits that we're trying to achieve in terms of health, health benefits, active passive recreation, mental health benefits. If you have a look at the work by Sharon Pittman and Martin Eli that pulls together some studies about um, the mental and the physical health benefits um, and, and the flow and effects to community, we're also trying to look at the, um, the social comfort benefit, the thermal comfort benefits. Certainly, the clim every ch climate change adaptation plan you read from a council says water sensitive urban design is an integral part of that. So, how do we make embed that, and how do we bring it into our into our infrastructure and into our planning? And certainly, we need to be mindful that um, if we have an increase in tree cover of 10%, that's going to give us an urban cooling of 0.5 to 1%, one degree. So all of, these, all of these things need to be considered as we move forward, that our green spaces and our green infrastructure and water, the water that sustains that is going to help create the types of communities that people want to live in. And we also, um, it was mentioned by Julia about the threshold temperature. So if the threshold temperature in Adelaide goes over 43%, 43 degrees, we can expect mortality rates to increase by 2 to 10 per cent. So the, the vulnerable um, section of our community um, need to be protected and we feel that green infrastructure can help support that in the future um, based by good water sensor urban design. Oops. It's not working. Here we go. Um, just as an example, if you look at the, at the Lights View development, there's a lot of green space. That development has been based on um, walkability, livability at its heart. Um, the green spaces in that development are going to be sustained through, or they are being sustained through recycled stormwater that's been purchased from the city of Salisbury. So again, um, the, 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 the nature of that development is going to be heavily reliant on good water sensitive urban design and integrated water management. So if, if we want these community, these type of communities in the future, we really need to look to the, the water solutions um, to help, the, help sustain these lifestyles that we want. I'm having trouble with this. Sorry. Um, in terms of resilience, um, I'll talk a bit later on about um, the urbanisation. We know that um, urbanisation is going to increase our runoff, and obviously a lot of the goiter work has de dealt with how can water sensitive urban design take the edge off some of those um, stormwater peaks, peak flows, and certainly um, that's one of the things that are going to be top of mind for some of you here today. Um, also, they're looking at solutions at a range of scale. So if we, if we have water sensor urban design integrated, distributed throughout our catchments, that's going to give us more resilience in the future than just looking at one end of line solution in some cases. Um, just looking at the 30 year plan, I think we'd all agree that um, we don't want to see urban growth taking up our valuable farmland and, and our um, highly biodiverse areas on the fringes of our city. So um, we, I think it's pretty much consensus that infill is the way to go. Um, we know that 70% of the new housing stock is going to come from infill and 30% is going to be from those greenfield. But we're going to have to be a lot cleverer about how we deal with the infill component um, if we're not going to make um, hot 
um, un, you know, unfriendly suburbs for our communities. And I think that's part of the challenge for this group here today, to talk through how are we going to embed water sensitive urban design, not only in our green fields, but also into our infield suburbs, given that is going to be the majority of the growth in the future. Um, for more sustainability, um, I suppose the water sense of urban design has been driven of in re more recent years about water quality. Just a bit of a snapshot. So we know that 70% of the sediments that are now reaching the Gulf are from stormwater because water uh, SA Water have um, done some great work in recent years and have taken a lot of the load out from their, um, their outflow. So really, the focus now needs to shift to stormwater on what we can do for stormwater to remove the sediments. And certainly, again, um, cer certainly end-of-line systems and stormwater harvesting will play a big role in that and distributed where, where we can't have end-of-line solutions, distributed solutions throughout our catchments will play a big part. And we also know that there's 150 tonnes of stormwater 150 tonnes of nitrogen reaching the Gulf through stormwater as well. But on the, on the upside, there's, back in 2012, there were 56 managed aquifer recharge schemes working throughout Adelaide. There's probably, um, that's based on a GOID report, there's probably a number that have joined since then. So we, we are leading the way and when we go to conferences interstate and meet with our colleagues, they do envy South Australia in, in the fact that we have got um, the access to good aquifers and these are a solution for us and certainly in many um, areas they will be. Um, and, but there will be some regions where uh, manager act for recharge isn't an option because of the groundwater situations in those areas and what are those communities going to do to make sure that they're resilient in the future and that's where we need to look at alternative water sense of urban design solutions. Um, actually, one other thing. Um, we know that once you get over 10% imperviousness in a catchment, um, your stream health starts to decline. And even some studies have said as, as little as 5% impervious, uh, direct connected impervious areas. So we're going to have in the future, um, some councils, are, in the city of Marion planning study that was done by Jensen has predicted that they're gonna go from about 65% impervious, impervious to 89% impervious. So that's a challenge to that, that community and to all of us to think about uh, um, in the projected 30 years, I should qualify that, um, that that's the potential. Um, so we need to think about how can communities like that, can councils like that adjust and look at their, their planning and, and, and work through that challenge that that's going to present to that community. One minute. Um, and then just, just being mindful that water sensor urban design is not just about stormwater. It's been a big focus of us today and certainly the, the targets uh, um, focus a lot on stormwater. But we need to be mindful that we've got a massive resource in recycled wastewater as well. And we need to be looking at ways that we can integrate that. And that's going to take a lot of cross-governance issues to, to work through. But there's already examples where local government and SA Water are starting to partner up. And we, it'd be great under the new integrated water management plan if we could see more opportunities um, for that, but also looking at ways that the productive use of recycled water can enhance our tourism, can en enhance our communities, can enhance our commercial areas as well. If we can integrate water sensor urban design into the public realm, into the streetscapes, um, we can also add to the economy for Adelaide and our regions. Um, and really just wrapping up, so if you think about what a sensitive what a, what a sensitive city or community is, like we prefer community because basically we've got a lot of people who are peri-urban or who are um, regions that are interested in, in advancing here. It's looking at the city as a catchment. We know that under a climate change, the rural catchment is going to be affected uh, more heavily by an, a, a change in um, a warming climate compared to the city catchments. Um, hard pace, hard paved services are going to be more resilient in terms of catchment storage. Um, we need to look at those ecosystem services, those cleansing um, systems that water sensitive urban design can promote, but also um, cities comprising water sensitive communities. So that's us. That's how can we enhance um, these, these, all these engineering and how can we build the capacity to do it. And just in the final, I've um, got a slide here. Sorry for anyone who's seen this before, but led on from what Julia said. I think if you look at where we've come from, back in 20, 2007, we had institutionalising water sensitive urban design. And um, from that point on, we had a WUSID technical manual that sat in with um, DPTI or then DPLG at the time. Um, there was a bit, quite a bit of expectation that water sensitive urban design was going to take off and it was become, going to become mainstream. And then we took a bit of a lull and things didn't quite happen for a while. Then it's been picked up. Um, the, the NRM board, Adelaide Mount Lofty NRM board, picked up the business case for capacity building. Um, we've, 
we've had the bridging program manager, Peter Newland, came in and, and worked with, with um, Design Flow to get the capacity building program up. Um, and then Water Sensitive SA was started. But I'm, I should have another dot point on there. Sorry, um, Andrew, it should be next. It should be the new bill. And I'm hopeful that really this is, this is the top of the crest of the new wave and that, that we can see the new bill working with the momentum that we've got here today in this room and we can see um, set in motion the pathway to make water sensitive urban design mainstream across Adelaide and Greater Adelaide and our regions. Thank you.